Uh, so hi everybody, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to be talking about um, the state of uh, continuous integration in the upstream Linux kernel. Uh, it's a little bit one-sided from the side of CI and testers, and it's targeted in a big part to people like me, but <clears throat> I would also want to have kernel developers say what they think about it, how they think it affects the reality or, you know, or doesn't. Do we have any kernel developers here, maintainers? Oh, hi, great, thanks for coming. Okay, so I'm Nikolai Kondrashov. I work at the CKI project at Red Hat. We are doing uh, continuous integration with the Linux kernel for internal kernel and for upstream as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm also working with uh, Linux Foundation's kernel CI project and uh, I'm developing the KCIDB project within there. Uh, I do electronics as a, and embedded as a hobby. So we, have, we will go briefly through what, what's the landscape like for kernel CI and uh, then I'm going to be defining continuous integration and measuring it, you know, providing metrics I think could describe it for the purpose of this talk and then we go over what we have and uh, what we cannot have and what is hard and what we can do with it or at least what I think we can do with it. So <clears throat> as probably many of you know, there's a whole bunch of different uh, systems that test the Linux kernel, and this is just a small sample. Each of them sends their own report emails and results in their own way, in their own time during the development process. Uh, and they, most of them have some sort of dashboard, and they're all different as well. So <clears throat> kernel CI is the Linux Foundation project that aims to be the kernel CI for the Linux kernel. But, uh, uh, so, in a big part, they are a CI system themselves, so they check out kernels, build them, test them. They have hardware, and they use hardware provided by third parties, connected to one central system, so they have the dashboard and, the <coughs> and their own reports. But also within the project, there is the KCIDB project, which aims to get the results from various other CI systems and put them in a single database and generate reports and notifications and have a dashboard for that and get, extract some value from aggregating this data together. And the structure of case IDB is very simple. You just send uh, JSON containing your test results, build results, and et cetera, and put them into database, show it on the dashboard, and then monitor what's coming in to generate subscription notifications about various results. So we get around 300,000 test, report, uh, test reports a day and uh, looks like uh, 20,000 builds and around 100 <coughs> revisions per day in case ADB right now. So the dashboards look like this. It's a Grafana prototype and we have reports which aggregate the results. If you look real closely, <laughs> you can see <laughs> that there is a, this report was generated from results from four different CI systems. Uh, so let's define just an abstract way the continuous integration. So it's quite simple. You simply test every change done to the code and or as close as you can and then give feedback on the result. Both top and up. So out of this you can come up with, uh, with some metrics. So the coverage of course, which tells you like how much functionality you're testing, uh, what's the percentage, then latency, how fast we get the results with the after testing after after the change was made or presented, and then how reliable the results are, how many false positives, false negatives it generates, and uh, how easy it is to interpret the results that the CI system produces. Like how how hard it is to figure out what's actually broken. <coughs> so, and for these metrics, of course, the ideal CI would test everything, provide instant feedback, and we will be always spot on and. It will just tell you what's exactly broken, not requiring you to go in there and read the logs and you know try to reproduce those problems. And the worst CI would of course test nothing or will test something else and will take forever and uh, never produces correct result and uh, the, result, the result it produces basically you know, impossible to comprehend. So the worst CI is much worse than no CI. Um, so with the upstream kernel CI, uh, nobody seems to know 
like since there is no single system and uh, just a bunch of separate systems, uh, and they don't really verify coverage that nobody seems to know what, what the coverage is like. So everybody focused on particular functionality, but nobody, it seems, really measures, you know, code line or function coverage. Um, of course, that's not very useful, but I mean, like it doesn't really tell you how much functionality is tested exactly, but it is something that could be measured and could look something like this from the, you probably saw these reports before. So this is from a single run at Red Hat CTI for ARM64 and uh, just typical set of tests. And uh, this includes just some directories. Well, most important ones, but not all of them. So this percentage is, well, just some percentage. <laughs> so nobody seems to know exactly what's going on there. Uh, typically, it takes from several hours to multiple weeks to get results for for your change or for whatever you merged in a, in a tree. Um, a lot of CI systems still do manual reviews of any, you know, any complicated results because there are still a lot of false positives, false negatives. Um, and uh, accessibility varies based on the CI system. Some, syst some systems provide very clear and very useful reports like, uh, like SysBot or, or Zero Day. Others, you know, more, you know, bare bones. So it's different, but the main thing is that they are all different. So there are, of course, limitations. And first of all, we can only get as much coverage as we have hardware because the kernel is an abstraction layer for, for hardware. So we need all the hardware to exactly test everything, but we cannot get all the hardware. So that's a hard limit for CI, as well as for latency, because, you know, to, to go faster, you need more, hard, more hardware to run on. So <laughs> reliability limit is obviously the hardware reliability as well, but also the how well the kernel is working. So if the kernel is buggy and tests failing all the time, like in interesting ways that, that, the, that the creators of those tests don't anticipate, the reliability of the CI system suffers. But that's what CI is supposed to fix. <clears throat> Accessibility is, uh, again, Hard, hard limit is hardware availability because often you get a failure on some hardware that you cannot access yourself, you cannot reproduce it, so it's hard to figure out what's going on. So you uh, you have to do the back, read back traces, ask the owner of the hardware what's going on. So it's it's a difficult process, and of course the kernel complexity is a limit for accessibility. So tests can only be as simple as the kernel is. Okay, so the coverage I think is. Mostly, mostly good. I mean, like mo there are many people who want to write tests and who write tests, but because of the other, other metrics such as reliability, latency, uh, it's like it's difficult to get that coverage out there and to deliver it to, to developers. And uh, it's kind of sometimes depressing how hard it is. So that's that's a ch that's a challenge. Um, uh, so the problem with latency is that, of course, not much pre-merge CI is done. And when you do it, you have to be extra careful because there is no authentication for patches that people send to mail. It's like anybody can send patches. And you would think 10 times before running that on real hardware in case it blows up, for example. So that's a problem. You can, you can run tests in, in VMs, but that's a limited effect. And then, of course, the slow human reviews, the required reviews for the actual test make it, make it longer. Like if, if the test completed right after you left work and then you come in in the morning and then you start going through your mails and checking those results and it takes a while, so it could, it could delay the results being sent to the developers quite a lot. So the main problem with reliability, I think, is the, the fact that tests constantly desync from the, from the kernel state. Right? And, uh, that's also a problem because the latency is too high. So by the time test result arrives, uh, somebody the code with the bug is already in the kernel and it's, it's getting stuck there until we fix it. And then as a result, we get more failures with other CI systems. And that's a big problem as well. As well as another problem is that you have multiple kernel branches, multiple, multiple trees and bugs, you know, jump between them as, as maintainers pull the changes in and it's like you know 
heating it at flies with the flies water. So, uh, and the accessibility, the only problem I think is the, is the fact that uh, that we have all different reports that, and we have to, as, as develop, the developers have to try to interpret them all uh, in their own ways and it takes time. So, so there's like, there's a, it's, it's, it's a sort of a network of problems that affect each other. So, and for example, low, low reliability and accessibility lead to reduced trust to, towards results from kernel developers. So they, uh, they're reluctant to, to look at them or, you know, might say, might say like, I don't send them to me if they're, you know, unreliable or hard to comprehend. Uh, as a result, uh, gating is impossible if, again, if they're unreliable. And, and as well, the, the feedback is, you know, less than it could be towards the code and towards the te test themselves. So improve, improvement are slow. Improvements are slow, so people just don't get their feedback, don't run enough tests, and uh, it's not improving. And uh, again, the reliability and accessibility lead to high latency because of because of human reviews, etc. And the high latency as well is another reason why there is no gating, uh, and the reason why bugs stay in the public code that everybody uses longer, and result in more time wasted for by everyone. So there's again less time for improvement. You have to review those results and try to understand what's going on. <coughs> and this leads to even more latency. So I try to summarize what I think, how I think this, this whole system works uh, in this little graph. But uh, we will take a closer look at this later, but uh, if I had to pick one thing, it would be a uh, latency. Okay, that's enough gloom. You get your dog tags. I get to drink a little. Okay. So what can we do with this? Uh, well, at least what I think we can do with this. Or rather, what we can't do, first thing that we, that we must remember is that the kernel community is not a single team. It's, and it, moreover, it's not a single company where you can just say like, okay, now we enable gating with whatever we have and fix tests, and that way we start the, the whole process and we tighten the feedback loop, and uh, that's just not going to happen because nobody owes anybody much. <coughs> the companies that run the tests uh, and the developers are kind of have to work with trust, and uh, you have to first fix the test and gain that developer trust before they will start listening and looking at those tests. So. I think that's one of the main things in this situation. Um, so what I think we can do is, for coverage, obviously, we need more hardware. We need to attract more companies to run tests and to you know, provide their results. And if, if you have your own CI system, you, can, uh, you don't want people to control your hardware. You can send your results to KCIDB, and uh, you can also help work on the report and to make it more efficient. Uh, if you would rather contribute hardware and not, you know, do your own tests, you can always set up a Lava Lab and connect it to kernel CI. These links lead to instructions how to do that, and in any case, you can write to our mail list and then ask questions. Uh, for <coughs> for latency, I think the most most important thing to do would be do pre-merge testing, because again, it reduces number of public bugs and and has you know compound effect on on many things on on reliability as well. Uh, so if you'd like to do pre-merge testing on patchwork or on not patchwork, but with patches, then you could use patchwork and that's what some CI systems used before. Pick patches using the patchwork and then test it safely uh, as much as you can, probably in VMs. Uh, but uh, while researching this, I noticed that there's about 50 repositories in the maintainers file who are already using GitHub or GitLab instance and that could be a, a way to, to improve the situation by, for example, connecting the, connecting the GitHub or GitLab CI to, to your CI system, like, like kernel CI is thinking how to do that right now with this new kernel CI API that they're working on. So the idea is that you, public, for example, publish an action in GitHub Actions that just takes your patch, submits it to kernel CI, and then gives you a check mark after it's done, or a red cross. 
And why this is better than patchwork is because you get to authenticate the users who submit the merge request. You can say, like, okay, these users get to, get, to, get to the real hardware and the rest of them like needs to be verified before they get access to the internal CI and then you actually get your tests running on real hardware. <coughs> And that could be, this, this effect could be a selling point for other maintainers to get them at least to have a, have a repo on GitHub on GitLab for testing to, to get access to real hardware in an easy way. And perhaps merge, uh, do, do the testing of merge, merge requests and pull requests. Uh, so since, since reliability is a problem, like, like you, you should not you know, try to do all the tests at once. It's enough to just start with one test and put it into, into pre-merge. And uh, talk to the maintainer, decide which, one, which ones we need to do and uh, help start the feedback loop. Uh, well, I have an idea to, to, do use, uh, to use KCIDB subscription for that. And uh, the KCIDB subscription system that allows you to pick, for example, like which, which branch you want reports on compiler architecture, like a particular CI system, anything. So if you're interested in those results, send a message to the mail list or, or just talk to me. Uh, so then the thing is um, with latency is that manual reviews are hard and slow. So it's great if you can automate that and that's what various CI systems have been doing and that's what we are trying to build in KCIDB. Uh, and for example, Graphics CI does this, and you can see the system for entering various parameters uh, of, you know, patterns and uh, parameters to match in test results to detect when it's a known issue and it's, it's already a bug open, and so that you do not notify your maintainers about this problem or developers, and you know, keep keep the CI working. Same thing is done uh, in CKI uh, as well as Red Hat. And Sysbot is doing a similar thing, but they are additionally are able to automatically extract identifying information from kernel crashes and then group the crashes into, into a single group into under a single bug automatically. So that works very well for them. And with this, they're able to produce a lot, a lot, a, and a lot of crashes and reproduce bugs, et cetera, automatically without human review. So uh, this, and this will be probably controversial so what I think is, could be done about reliability is the, the best way to approach it, apart from fixing the test all the time, et cetera, is to make sure that the tests are in sync with the code and uh, what we can do is you know, move at least the most popular, most impactful tests into the kernel repository proper, like LTP, for example, and integrate in the kernel documentation, make, make them official. So that would join, of course, K unit uh, and K self test, but with uh, you know wider coverage. Uh, the problem, of course, is that once you integrate it with a single branch, then it starts like if you if you integrate it into master, then it starts testing master, and the older branches will stop working. So you would need to backport whatever you integrated to those branches and fix them. But afterwards, the complexity of the tests decreases, and they have become more reliable because they don't have to account for all the different kernel versions and can focus on testing this one and you can keep them in sync. But that of course only works if we actually run those tests and run them fast. So in the CI system, it's important to, you know, to prioritize execution of M3 tests so they are, they're executed earlier and the results produced faster so that you can shorten the loop and uh, keep them working. Uh, well, accessibility is not so bad, but uh, I think that if we have decent enough uniform reports, it could save people time if they always receive the same report. But this, there could be different opinions, of course, and often it's the XKCD comics of about the various standards that comes up. Uh, so it, it could be just another one more report as a result, but uh, it doesn't mean we shouldn't try. So come to me and tell me uh, what, what you would like to see there and uh, you know, just write us or help the development of the report system. So here's, uh, here's the influence graph again with the improvements I think should go in there and that's how the 
could affect the whole system and uh, in particular developer trust and uh, the ultimate targets the stronger hold feedback and test feedback which lead to better quality. That's all. Thanks everybody. Any comments? Questions? Ideas? What do you think? There's somebody behind there? So just a question. If new packages are submitted often, is there any level of like, requirement or suggestion for maintainers to run CI or run any tests against those new packages? Or is that up to every maintainer? So the question was uh, when patches are being sent for for maintainers to look at, are there any requirements to run tests on those? Is that right? Yeah. So in some subsystems, and some maintainers, they do have requirements and they define the test that you need to run, but largely I don't think there is anything at large. And uh, that's, that's what Veronica here wanted to work on. Yes, yes, you, you did. And I think that's what Talis is going to be doing, talking to maintainers and trying to determine which test could be called canonical for their subsystem and to put that into, for example, maintainer's file to have it documented and to have, for example, check patch output output the, the recommendation or requirement for the testing when we generate the patches. Yes? Yeah. Um, so do you have an idea how many of the tests like, are possible to run virtual machines versus the ones that need real hardware? And would it be like massive, would it be massive to make it possible to run more kinds of tests in virtual machines? Of course, of course, the, of course there should. Uh, percentage, I don't have a number. My feeling is that it's a fairly high percentage, especially things like LTP uh, could be run in a virtual machine. Uh, I can only say about Red Hat, I think that our test database contains maybe 40% tests that can run in virtual machines. Anybody knows better? Like it's just my feeling, I'm just poking, I haven't calculated that, but we do have tests which explicitly marked as uh, can run in virtual machine. And that's one way to improve this and to reduce latency and to arrive at the Premier CI. Anything better than nothing, like anything that will start the loop of fast feedback and you know, get us closer to gating, anything goes. Yes? Yeah, we have private tests and uh, yeah, oh yes, the question. Thanks, thanks, Thomas. The question is, how does CKI deal with uh, tests in private hardware? How do we make sure like the the tests are not visible outside or or the NDAs are not broken? Yeah, we keep tests in a separate repository. The tests code themselves, and I think that. I think that most of the tests are still in the, our KPAD database, but I'm not sure exactly how the, like, the very secure, the very secret tests are added there, but we do try to keep them away from the public. Anyone else? Uh, is there a kind of uh, open source project or, or for methodology that you use in order to run only specific tests? Let's say I change only the network driver. I don't have to run the whole CI, right? Mm -hmm. and to greatly improve the latency. So what's, what's, what's happening now with this? So at CKI there is, there is a system for picking tests based on patches. And we worked with it for a long time so we can share that, you know, it's all open source, but we can share the experience and you know, the approach with anyone who's interested. But like, since we test on real hardware a lot, we have to be careful with that obviously. And, not only to reduce latency, but also to reduce the load because there's a lot of patches. But yeah, we have a system where we can match like, okay, when these files changed and run that test, and, uh, things like that. It's quite, quite sophisticated <coughs> and works quite well. Yes? In the system that has maybe not be so many kernel subsystem maintainers, and is there some way in which they can uh, trigger the test 
for the things they care about. Uh, like they, they collect the branch for the next uh, full mm -hmm. request they're going to send to the AI environment. Can they easily run the tests uh, on the hardware that affects that? So there is. And, and yeah. do they? Yeah, the question was, and I'm sorry, I'm forgetting to repeat the questions, but the question was, is there a way, like, do we work with maintainers to, do we provide a way for them to trigger tests for a particular change that, like, they want to, they want to do on real hardware? Uh, I'm not sure about CKI, but, like, exactly, like, do they have special branches, but CKI picks up the, main, like, monitors maintainer trees, and when they push something, it triggers tests. And so do plenty of other CI systems. Plus, there are agreements between maintainers and CI systems that when they like they they ask like, oh, can you monitor this specific repo where I will be pushing at will to check my things and get a report? So there is that too, like, like a special branch that they ask to test, and then get the results after a while. Yes. Uh, is it possible for an individual developer to trigger the test? Uh, uh, was the question, is it possible for an individual contributor to, to request testing of a patch? Uh, not as such as far as I know. So some CI systems, they do pre-merge testing of patches on the mail list. Like for some subsystems, I think that uh, Intel, Intel's graphics CI does that. Uh, and uh, some subsystems, for, like at least one subsystem has a GitLab repo and they have, uh, they have CI set up there. So when you open an MR, maybe you will get some tests run. I don't know what kind of ac access control they, they have there. But there is no universal agreement how to do that. And there is you know, no single CI system that does, does this universally. How do you handle uh, reproducibility? So let's say a CKI test fails and you have to inform the maintainer. How do you go about giving them a, a workable way to reproduce it? Well, if it's, yeah, for maintainers from outside Red Hat, that's the problem, of course. You just try your best to understand what the problem is and uh, review it and you know send an email out manually. That's what our main QE person does from time to time and they notice, like, so it's basically human review and explanations because we cannot normally give access to hardware that's inside Red Hat to outside people. For inside developers, of course, it's much easier. They can just get to the hardware and we provide all the help to tell them like, how to exactly run that test and you know, reproduce it. So that's a problem, of course. Now that's, that's the accessibility problem I was talking about. But if you use VMs, that solves this problem. Yeah, of course, of course. Of course, and uh, like Sysbot is very good at that. They basically generate, can generate a reproducer for you, like a C program, automatically generated that you can run and you know expose a problem in a syscall. Yeah, but uh, yeah, VMs in that that way are great. But of course, CI systems they do like to control their setup. They have their own provisioning and everything, and to arrive to exact at exactly you know the same setup that the test was running in is not always easy to communicate to a maintainer. Like, for example, with CKI, like we have our provisioning and we have our you know, test setup. But thankfully, that's not a problem most of the time. So it was still like, you, it, it, is, it is a bit of a problem to explain exactly, automatically especially, what you need to do exactly to reproduce that. I'm not sure I answered answer yeah, the question. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm something similar, but for Windows drivers that run on top of KVS, I'm just asking questions. Crazy. In our development, and we actually managed to do some kind of reproducible. For that, we have to provision the VM. Because that, that, that's how we yeah. do the same set. Right? Yeah, of course, when you, can do, when you can do VMs, that's much easier. But still, kernel consists of a lot of drivers, and those do need to be tested, and that, that, that is a problem. Okay. Would it make sense to, because a lot of the, be of the tests that need to run on real hardware, I think, because they need to test hardware. Yeah. Would it be better to write tests 
as a bird can repeat that and back to heart right through. So that uh, it becomes easier to make a little bit deeper as long as they have that specific piece of hardware that can be passed through to the bird. So the question was, uh, the, the question was, uh, could it be a good idea, maybe it's a good idea to at least run the test itself in a stable virtual machine environment and pass through the hardware to the VM so that at least the test setup and the you know, framework and everything could be automated. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I'm not sure that anybody has tried to do, do, to do that. Yes, of course, like two, two kinds of devices, because yeah, again, like there has to be support in the in the VM and everything. But it's an interesting idea, worth trying, especially for some kind of devices. Right? Anyone else? Any comments? Yeah. Yeah, it's maybe more of a comment. Like I, I do have hardware that I I wish I could contribute to that, so that the maintainers would actually run tests on that and catch the bugs before they actually reach the mailing tree. But from what I'm understanding, even if I go there now and, and try to enroll the hardware in some way, it's not going to happen because people are not actually running the, any sort of pre-merge test to that, right? No, no, no like not pre-merge test. Is some world in which the, this boot, uh, uh, do you still catch the stuff that maintainers merge, like for a particular subsystem? And you might, might get in, you might get your test executed before it reaches Linux or, you know, another maintainer. So but like that's if, still if it fails, maybe nobody would look at it. So like it would depend on someone actually looking at this dashboard result and not merging the patches uh, because they decide not to because that test. Fails. Yeah, that's 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 a pro bit of a problem. So communication there is difficult. But uh, I think it's it could still be worth it to talk to Kernel CI and expose your Lava Lab there. We talked about it. So. You can talk to, to us on, on the on the chat or on the mail list. Just ask what you think about it, and Guillaume probably will give you an extensive answer and ideas for it. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>